Welcome back to the Remedial Film Class Podcast, a special Friday edition in time for the holidays. I'm your host, Dan. And I'm Travis. And I'm George. Guys, do you believe in Santa Claus? Uh, Don't answer that. Guys, uh, did you know that this movie is called Here Comes Santa Claus? Also? I, I prefer to say it's French name. Go you ahead. Say it for me. I, I, I don't <laughs> speak French. Je veux be de la boule de la fa. Boop, boop, ba, ba. Boop, ba, ba, yeah, boop, 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 Excuse me, guys. I got to go take a wicked yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about I Believe in Santa Claus. And why are we talking about I Believe in Santa Claus, which can be found on Amazon Prime? Uh, we're talking NBHS. about it because, guys, I, I think this fills in a lot of the blanks as to where these guys, John Hughes and company, Got their Home Alone ideas. Hmm. I, I feel like I, I, it was a blur. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like I didn't even watch the movie yet. I'm not going to make you guys watch the movie because you. Uh, I was pushing your limits <laughs> with Deadly Games. I'm, I'm well aware of your capabilities, and I don't think you're ready for I Believe in Santa Claus. So I'm going to tell you about it, and at the end, if you want to watch this movie, you guys totally should. Uh <laughs> I'm not gonna make you do that. I didn't know how long we had the yes end. <laughs> I was about to like do an hour show fully improv. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I haven't done this in a while, but I can. No, I'm gonna I tell was, you just no that, one's gonna watch it so right I can front. say anything about this fucking movie. <laughs> I believe in Santa like, Claus. And then the aliens game is yeah. it is dubbed. <laughs> it is dubbed in English. So we you, should we should put our own voices through it. There's Dude, no I'm subtitles. Gonna watch it, bro. I'm gonna watch you it. You gotta watch it. It's fucking weird. <laughs> it's, it's very and strange. Then this ogre. <laughs> now I'll tell you, it's uh, from one of the writers of True Lies. Really? Yeah, this guy Didier Kaminka. Uh, Kaminka. Kaminka. I I really should. I don't know what that last well, name. Is. That doesn't sound. While French. you're while you're figuring, he's gonna out. go pee for real. He's not, not <laughs> yeah, lying. Serious. Oh, he's while taking a real wee wee. While yeah, no, while wee? you're figuring out how to pronounce his name, I'll be right back. <laughs> He's going to take his guitar into the bathroom. He's going to go oh, Didier, yeah. his... Yeah. <laughs> hey, remember, George, it's a holy day, and more than three shakes is a yeah. sin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I Believe in Santa Claus, written by one of the guys that's credited as a writer on True Lies. Now, I didn't know this. Travis, did you know that True Lies was a remake of a French movie? No. Called La <laughs> Total. Really, uh, Alberto Lindsay movie. <laughs> no, it's like, it's legit, like actually a remake, like a credited remake. Um, okay. No, I didn't know. That. And so one of the writers, this Didier Kaminka fella, who, by the way, his IMDb profile picture is Fabio Testi and him in a shot together from some movie. Oh, nice. And you know, I love Testi when they're Fabio. You love Testis. So those Fabio Testis. Uh, you know. So that was a weird thing for me to be like, that guy looks like Fabio Testi. I'm like, oh no, it's he's the other guy. Cool. But anyway, <laughs> that's weird that the writer of to- True Lies, uh, at least the thing True Lies is based on, wrote a movie about Santa Claus going to Africa on a counter-terror miss- mission to save, yeah. to capture. Actually, it kind of sounds like a True Lies type movie, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's weird. Uh, but, Tia Carrera. But instead of Jamie Lee Curtis, you get like a fairy princess lady uh, who her fairy magic only works in certain locales and only if she has her magic wand. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, this movie that we're talking about is also edited by Pauline Le- Leroy, who I'm sure you've all heard of, but who did yeah. sound work on a movie called Le Troc, yes. which is like last house on the left level fucked up. Okay. So that lady's involved in the Santa Claus movie and the script supervisor followed up the Santa Claus movie with joy and Joan, which if you know what that movie is, it doesn't really follow a Santa Claus movie. So this is a weird mm. movie made by a bunch of people that really have no business making a children's movie. Right. And clearly <sighs> counter terror Santa guys. Have I already sold you on this movie? It should have. Yeah. It's the beginning of Scrooge. I, we need to watch it. Bro. It was there. It's really strange. Well, it kind of reminds, I know you don't like Mel Gibson, but there's a movie coming out. I just saw the trailer. It's called Fat Man. Oh, I've seen picture. I've he, seen the poster for that. Yeah. Yeah, he plays like Saint Nick, 
like in hiding, retired, and he's like being approached to. So that's a whole like a whole CIA connection, FBI. Like he's a hitman. Like it, <laughs> I'm watching this trailer. I'm like, this is so outlandish, but it's played completely deadpan. Deadpan, yeah. like Mel Gibson at his best. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm on. I'm, I'm gonna watch it because because <laughs> nobody plays crazy like him. Because he is crazy. Yeah, right. But yeah, I, I, it's it's basically Murtock playing playing Santa Claus. So I'm I'm on. I'm on board. It could be good fun. Uh, yeah. I'll have to read the review later because I'm not going to see it. But I, I'm sure it's fun. Uh, hey, so <laughs> Travis, do well, you he, do a good... He loves sugar tits. <laughs> do you do a good impression of Kevin's mom yelling, Kevin, when she's on the plane? Uh, I feel like you've got I've, that in there somewhere. I've done it, um, but I won't do it because people are sleeping here. Gotcha. Uh, but I used to what's funny is i used to have a uh that sound bite on my computer at work <laughs> and i used to play it uh whenever this guy kevin would come in the office <laughs> <laughs> or his name would come up i just it would go, kevin! like real loud i can't do it now. well hey at least you know kevin as a name that's a nice common name doesn't sound anything yeah. like thomas right he, she's Right. He's clearly not based on the directly off the character in Deadly Games. That would be thieving. No. Uh, right. Certainly nothing like a character maybe named Simon from okay. this French movie. So Simon, the main character of this movie, first thing that happens in this Christmas movie, he gets blamed for something he didn't do. A bully does something to him and he gets blamed for it. He gets locked up in a closet by a, an authority figure. Right. And then like you cut brother. to him going to sleep beneath the poster of the ugly duckling. Mm. I mean, if the vibe is that first scene in home alone. So hard. Yes. So hard. Yeah. It's just like, Oh, poor Kevin. I mean, Simon, he's going to have what to sleep. His brother's with... name in, in home alone. The oldest uh, brother the or the one Buzz? that pisses pants. Buzz. That's a Buzz. Buzz yeah. Your girlfriend's. Blech. Yeah. Buzz. That's when he says, woof. Woof. And yeah. Made me crack up. <laughs> My favorite bit of Home Alone trivia I think that I've heard ever is that that picture is of a boy, of a boy dressed yeah. up like a girl because they couldn't yeah, really? they yeah. couldn't like fathom putting a girl through being woofed at in a movie. Yeah, so that's, that's actually kind of nice. Man. It's actually a director's son, I think. It's that's like that's way better than anything they did to that dog in Deadly Games. Oh, that's actually a good solution to that problem. If you made it a picture of an ugly girl, it'd be like, oh, I feel sorry for that yeah. ugly girl, but it's not an ugly girl. But I think actresses are able to handle like there's a there's a movie uh called The Devil's Advocate. Ooh, we're watching we were, that at some point. We're definitely watching that movie. And there's a girl in that movie who is not good looking. Okay. And she made a career playing the ugly duckling in a lot of movies. And uh she embraced it. She grew up to be a pretty girl, but awkward years she was awkward and she played the ugly duckling many times so i think an actress can handle it as long as you tell her maybe you get a pretty girl and ugly her up like they normally do with some yeah when some someone, actresses well, yeah like, when someone's required to be ugly you don't get an ugly person like you if you a... if you google um charlize theron monster you'll see that they took probably one of the prettiest women on the planet and turned her into George Went. It's <laughs> Norm from Cheers. <laughs> like yeah. basically, like they through makeup, they completely made her. So you can do that with makeup and just isn't it? It's isn't like, it just easier though to just like to throw a dude in the picture frame? And yeah. Be like, wow, that's a no. really ugly girl. So if you were wondering uh, uh, yeah. where any of the character stuff for Kevin's family comes from, uh, it wasn't Deadly Games. It was it was probably I believe in Santa Claus. Uh, there's a whole lot of him like looking at pictures of his parents in a frame and wishing they'd come home. He legit asks Santa Claus to bring his parents home from Africa where they've been been kidnapped by rebels who disagree with their own government. So you don't get a lot of background as to why their folks were, you know, are they government and got kidnapped or were they just nationals on, you know, safari and get kidnapped as bargaining chips? They don't really go into the politics too far. Honestly, they don't paint the rebels as bad guys. They humanize him a lot more than you'd ever think for a Christmas movie where Santa Claus has to go in as a counter-terrorist to capture back the 
parents from the... Re- it's very strange. Here's, here's the question. Is the father played by Bill Paxton? No, but I <laughs> wish he were. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Uh, but what you do end up out of this movie is basically an arc where the parents are gone and all the kid wants for Christmas is for his parents to be home. Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert, he's going to get his wish. And it's going to play out Sounds so like similar to Home Alone. Uh, okay. Now, another thing that you don't see at all in Deadly Games, potentially, and I say this because you could argue, okay, a person could successfully probably defend the position that Marv and the neighbor together both kind of have aspects of the Santa Claus from Deadly Games. Okay. But an interesting thing I read today is that the neighbor arc who is scary and then grows to be friendly in church and then redeems himself in church and then saves the day. That whole arc was added by Chris Columbus later. Okay. Not in the original script. So not in the Deadly Games draft of Home Alone. This is later when they're adding more character stuff. Mm -hmm. So back to I Believe in Santa Claus. There's an ogre who happens to be a cannibal who actually legit wants to like grim fairy tale eat the children and this lady. Does he have a hand injury? He doesn't have a hand injury, but he does use a bladed weapon that looks a lot like the shovel. It's like an axe or something, but it's very threatening. (laughs) He ends up Okay, so this movie's fucking weird. Have I talked about this yet? Uh, The same actor that plays the ogre also plays like a creepy kind of Uncle Frank type character at the school who like you get the same vibes as you do in Deadly Games before the guy is Santa Claus. Like, what's this guy looking for? I probably don't want to know. Right? Right. He's Uh, trolling for girls, for kids. That's one actor playing the authoritarian character from the beginning with a regular beard. Same actor with a beard plays the ogre, and at the end of the movie, for some reason, the ogre follows them back from the North Pole, essentially, this area in Finland where the the action happens, follows them to their town in whatever part of France they're from. Uh, Guys, he's in church. He scares the kid because the kid's like, oh my God, it's the ogre, he's in church. And then Mm. they have this moment of like, I see you. You were human. I am human. We are in church. Move on. Isn't that weird? That is weird. Also, cut to, on that part, cut to a children's choir, just like both Home Alone movies. Uh, Only in this case, for some reason, the lady who is also the teacher, who is also the fairy princess at times, and also Red Riding Hood for a bit. uh, It's a very weird movie. She uses the child's <laughs> choir as backup singers for her to like hmm. Bonnie Tyler a song out real quick. It's very weird. Nice. She's not a pigeon lady, is she? She isn't, but I wish she was. Oh, okay. Uh, there's also some Wizard of Oz kind of stuff, or even you could almost argue it's like a Jacob's Ladder because at one point he goes right. to sleep and then stuff gets weird, but it never un-gets weird. Right. So I guess you could argue if you wanted to that everything was a dream until the very, very end when the government brought his family home and that was Santa Claus bringing the family home. Maybe. Hmm. I think that would, yeah. So it's wizard of Oz kind of gotcha. with an ogre that is also a shovel wielding neighbor. So they go to an airport for a field trip. Cause that's what kids do in France. And they pretend to take a plane. Now they're already in plan in France. So where do they pretend to take a plane to New York, New York, uh, but of course <laughs> the kids get separated from the group that it's two kids in this, not just Kevin. Is not Tim Curry in this movie? I wish. Uh, <sighs> so they get separated at the airport <laughs> and the kid, I think this is your dream logic work. And the kid's like, we need to go to Ro- Rovaniemi, Rovaniemi, Finland, which is like where the, where you write, le- if you're in France, you write letters to Santa. They don't go to the North pole. They go to a specific village in Finland. I looked it up. It's like a real thing. Uh, they're like, is this hey. where he runs into Donald Trump in the lobby? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, they <laughs> cut it in Canada. but Of course. So Ro- that's, they, that's the meme. They see, yeah. a, uh, they see a plane go into the North Pole. Of course, the busy airport staff think that they are the two kids that they're waiting to board the plane, put the passes on them, jam them on the plane real quick, just like Home Alone 2. Mm. So they go to, they go to the North Pole. 
Dream logic happens. They find Santa Claus. We're 20 minutes into the movie. They've found Santa Claus. Everything's cool. That's when he takes off to go save the parents from Africa. I mean. Wow. And there's an ogre in this. And which is so crazy. the ogre is the neighbor of Santa Claus. <laughs> so they walk to the ogre's house because the girl that comes in with Simon is just a jerk and doesn't listen to Santa Claus. So he ties him up, threatens to eat him. Uh, I have to see this movie. Is there a talking donkey in this movie? I wish there I were. Ha- I have to see this. We're sure. not even halfway through the movie yet, and I've already... Holy shit. Dudes. I love waffles. But think of how much Home Alone we've already covered <laughs> that wasn't waffles. in Deadly yeah. Games. And this is why this movie is so key, and why I, I, I've i never seen anybody else connect this movie to Home Alone. So you're here first, guys. Uh, this weird movie I watched a lot as a kid, because it was one we got from the library a lot or something. I don't know why we watched as kids, but... Did you ever return it, or you still own it? No, I, I had to buy my own copy. My parents kept returning. Oh, we shit. we are all good returners in my hmm. my group. We're not keepers. Hmm. Um, I have books for thirty years. <laughs> so, I still have them, so I don't get in trouble. But you're, yeah, you're not I've never returned. You're them. not in trouble until you return. <laughs> right. Them. Once you get rid of them, now if they ever come for them, I don't have them, but I do have them. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I don't send any ogres after me. So you know that part where Kevin in Home Alone has to like climb Kevin. up Buzz's shelves to get the money so he can sustain himself, and if he doesn't make yes. a big mess of the room, he doesn't have enough money to live. And also he doesn't have a spider. He doesn't have a spider to spider fight off the bad guy, guys. Right. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Part of their way to stay alive in this dream ogre house is to keep making messes because he insists that they clean his house before he eats them. And uh, so okay. here they are intentionally making messes to preserve their own safety. That's a stretch, but it's it's weirdly similar. A lot of this stuff is a stretch, but weirdly similar. Where we get very weird, though. Oh, we're not there yet? It gets weirder. Yeah. So, it hasn't gotten that weird yet. <laughs> the ogre is flying the plane? So like in any good hostage situation, right, the fairy princess who's actually the teacher in real life but in the dream reality maybe it's a i assume it's a dream she's now little red riding hood she gets kidnapped by the ogre as well she trades herself to be like the first victim instead of the little girl because the dude's like got a straight like a fork and a knife and he's gonna like kill this little girl and eat her and he keeps saying how he wants to he how he wants to put whipped cream on the very attractive mid twenties little red riding hood lady and have her for dessert. Ugh. Mm. Anyway, she talks Oof. him into switching places uh, with the little girl. So he's about to kill the teacher. <laughs> so here's, here's where it gets really weird. What is the significance of rope in home alone and home alone too? Right? Safety. You've got the rope that leads from the tree house back to the house. Big, right. large gauge rope, right? This is, Climbing mm-hmm. rope. Mm-hmm. You don't just like find that around the house. Do you have climbing mm-hmm. rope at your houses? No, you have to purchase that. It's pretty weird. No. So he has this giant rope, stock. big thick gauge rope. Well, then Home Alone 2, the gag is right there climbing up rope that's been soaked in kerosene. Mm. Lights on fire. So in 1984's I Believe in Santa Claus, to get out of all this situation, the kid knocks like a an open flame lamp because it's an ogre's cabin a jar so that it lights a large gauge rope on fire the large gauge rope snaps like you do and drops a large wooden chandelier directly on the head of the ogre like straight up paint cans to the head of the ogre and it's like it looks like a wagon wheel Kind of, but on the top, it's got like candelabra stuff. Mm -hmm. Straight up, just like Home Alone Trap, drops it on the guy's head. Okay. What the hell? Was that just something that was improvised, or was that planned? It's in script. It's uh, You mean like from the kid's perspective? Yeah. Totally improvised. It's a feature of the ogre's house. He leans that fire over to get himself out of the trap that is holding them in. And just straight up bonks so, the dude on the head. So they're taking the character from Deadly Games, who's premeditated, and they're taking the ideas from the other movie for visuals. 
Well, and like the character stuff, and then that, yeah, the, the, the one particular trap. You know, what if we bopped him on the head like they did with that chandelier? What if we made it paint cans? We have those around the house. Boom. Or an iron. Or an iron. Exactly. So the bearded man gets clobbered by the thing. It's so Home Alone. My kids, I let them, I let them watch it. I said, kids, what does this remind you of? And they go, oh, that's Home Alone. I'm like, yeah, these are my kids. What's up? Uh, <laughs> so the movie gets to the end, right? Uh, kid wakes up from his, maybe this was all a dreamness. Like they do a good job for a kid. You wouldn't track that, right? You just think it was all an adventure, but you know, it's actually a kid's movie. Not like the last movie that had dog murder in it. No, but I, I skip to the end. I say, kids, you, you see the bop on the head. Oh, that looks like home alone. Uh, and my older kid was like, Hey, that torch looks like the torch they use on the door frame. I'm like, kid, you're smart. I like you. Uh, Movie ends, kid wakes up in bed, goes, looks through the window to see his parents have returned home. And of course, the movie ends with the running and the arms and the hug. <laughs> and like my, the old man. It, it's Home Alone. Yeah. All the heart of Home Alone that you don't get in Deadly Games. If you didn't know this movie existed, right? If, if you'd never heard of I Believe in Santa Claus slash Here Comes Santa Claus hash, Je Reconter Le Priem Noel. If you never knew that movie existed, which most people don't, honestly, it's kind of crappy and obscure. Uh, you would look at Deadly Games and be like, well, OK, yeah, sure. There's traps, but there's traps and predators. So maybe they just got those for Home Alone from there. And yeah, the kids home, you know, you can talk yourself out of how much of an influence Deadly Games really has. Aside from the little stuff. But if you right. combine Deadly Games with I Believe in Santa Claus. You have Home Alone. That's Home Alone, dude. And two. And two. A lot of Home Alone 2 in both Deadly Games and I so Believe in Santa Claus. in one year, you've crapped on <laughs> two of my heroes. You've crapped on John Carpenter and John Hughes. Well, you know, according to the, the thing here, it says uh, John Hughes wrote Home Alone in a weekend. Yeah. So, I mean. Well, no wonder he was watching these two movies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, could do that too. So he took three hours to watch a couple movies, and then he took the rest of the weekend to write the script. You can oh. tell that the script for Home Alone was written really quick because he uses the term "horse's ass" like what twice, three times. Like mm. he was like mm. he didn't have enough time to come up with new insults, and so they just kind of went with yeah, it, like donkey dick. Yeah, I just I'm really feeling <laughs> horse's ass today, so I'm just gonna use it yeah. two or three times. Like, what's up? One of the weirder yeah. things I was reading about Home Alone was. I guess it was originally a Warner Brothers movie, but then Fox picked it up because Warner balked at the budget. But the yeah. detail on uh, the Wikipedia thing, and I, I checked it with their source. I guess it comes from that Netflix show, The Movies That Made Us. Basically, they snuck a copy to Fox of the script illegally before Warner dumped on it to have like a backup plan. I wonder how often that happens, that studios get each other's scripts illegally and just never fess up to it. But... It's kind of interesting that like, it's like, oh, of course they wouldn't steal. These guys play by the rules. This is John Hughes. Also, he illegally dumped the script over at Fox because he knew he was having trouble right. with the budget. Like, these guys play ball, right? Like, yeah, these are grown-ups. And grown -ups. they steal uh, their entire script from uh, from France. They go to France, man. Write That's right where in they the go in Home Alone. <laughs> they could have we'll met... take the ogre out. Take the ogre out and we'll be fine. I'd love to run the stats like the probability statistics on France as a target for a family from Chicago called the McAllisters. Right. Cause right away right. you're thinking family stuff. You're thinking Ireland, England, uh, you know, Christmas stuff. You've got a lot of, you know, just as much probability of Germany, uh, right. as France. Plus you've got the business connection, the brother's business that could put you anywhere, right? Like you could end up in Thailand and be like, Oh, well we're going to Thailand for Christmas. Cause we're going to meet my brother, you know, of all the places, in the entire world, they could have gone that would have made it difficult to get home quickly to see their kid. Uh, they went to France. Guys, I rest my case. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> I mean, because I just watched another movie that we're going to... exercise the demon. We're going to watch a movie next Thanksgiving, I think, that I just watched again uh, for the first time in a long time uh, this week. And it's like, dude had to get from like Wichita to Chicago and it took yeah. just as much time. As getting from France to Chicago. So you didn't have to go yeah, to France. Why'd you go to France? Yeah, I hear you. They didn't have to go all the way to France. Could have been 
could have been Canada. Could have get stuck at the border. I mean, shoot, yeah. they live in Chicago. Customs. They could have got stuck in St. Louis and just had bad weather and been like, oh, shoot, it's not safe to drive. I hope he's okay. Let's call the neighbor. Of course, the neighbor wouldn't have existed if we didn't have the ogre who had an arc right. to become a... Well, no, one's calling him because, yeah, he's a, he's a child-eating pedophile. Right. Yeah. I mean, allegedly. I allegedly. Alleged, allegedly. Right. Totally so, right. I mean, guys... He was never convicted. Never convicted. <laughs> Here's the thing. Deadly Games <laughs> is having a moment. You're going to hear about that movie all over the place. We're talking about it because it's interesting and it does influence Home Alone quite a bit. You should check it out. It's really fucked up. But I'm here to tell you, I believe in Santa Claus, Amazon Prime. It's like six bucks, seven bucks. It's not worth it. It looks like ass, but you still got to watch it because, <laughs> I mean, it looks like a Good VHS sell. rip. A it's not right great. There. But <laughs> here, oh, that tastes terrible. Here, try this. Somebody else was watching that movie in the 80s besides me, <laughs> and they made Home Alone, and nobody ever called him out for it. Right. So Merry Christmas, dudes. Until now. We should do a TV show called the movies that made us that weren't made. I can't think of it's the movies, movies that, that really movies made us. We, no, really though. Or right. it's the movies that we didn't know made us. Or the movies that made them. Yeah. The movies they <laughs> the watched movies and, made, and didn't fess up to. The right. movies that made the movies that made <laughs> us. First episode, Halloween. Yeah. Second episode, Home Alone. I've been waiting Home to Alone. talk about Home Alone for like the entire time we've done this podcast. If you go back to at least beginning of season two, I'm dropping hints left and right about Hughes yeah. and Chris Columbus. No, we're going to talk about it. So we did it yeah, guys. I still like John Hughes. I don't care about your ogre story. I'm still a fan. I mean, of he's Hughes. still a, he's, he's done so many. He John things. Carpenter, the hell out of these two movies into a movie that was way yeah. better than either of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, in the end, isn't that what movies and- are? And he probably wrote that the same weekend he wrote Breakfast Club. Right. <laughs> so just it's like crapped them both out me. on a Saturday. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's real good. Yeah. He is good. He's so good that he gives his A list perfect movies to somebody else to direct. Right. <laughs> He's like, here, I wrote this movie called Home Alone. I wrote it in the weekend. It's amazing. Here, I can't direct it. It's about to become the most profitable <laughs> comedy Too busy in history. With Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> Oh, and St. Elmo's Fire. <laughs> and planes, trains, and automobiles. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah. I mean, Uncle Buck. I mean, how many freaking movies has this guy written and or directed and produced? Yeah. Wow. Thank goodness for the French. Hey. Uh, yes. We ought to tell George what he's watching next week for the actual week of uh, Christmas. <sighs> well, next week, George, is a movie. Something... American, please. <laughs> <laughs> Something from Hollywood, oh, for shit. God's sake. Is this from Hollywood, Dan? <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna watch a c- classic, a cult classic. Okay, well, if it's if it's independent, that's fine too. Uh, I don't know. If it's, it's independent, a, it's but a it is. Classic. It's a little. It's a classic. Okay. Uh, the movie is called Black Christmas. Okay. That's all uh, we're gonna tell him. Yeah, we're not gonna. We it has come up a few times. So if you, he wasn't paying attention, if you listen to the show, you would know why it's come up. Okay. But we won't tell you. Yeah, anymore. I don't. I don't listen to the show. No, so. it's it sucks. I wouldn't listen either. But yeah. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to like four episodes today. <laughs> Just to hear what Dan and Post has to say. Oh, I'm always on top of Dan and Post. <laughs> Just he he's wrong a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hitting him in uh, you know, Travis and Post Post, I guess. I don't know. Travis Tra- Travis has to take Travis and Post to like Twitter or something. No, I'm Travis on YouTube. <laughs> 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 I just pop in like, yeah, I just listened and this is the timestamp where you were wrong. <laughs> It's always it's debatable, fun. but you know, that's yeah. the fun of doing the show. Guys, uh, it's the Christmas <laughs> season. We're watching Black Christmas next week, which... Black Christmas. I mean, Black Now, Christmas. there's three movies called Black Christmas. By God, please watch the 70s one. Don't watch the other 1974, I believe. Okay. 74. It's on, it's on your, it's on here, I believe. For so free? If you have your, if you have your trial. And, oh, it's on, uh... On Shudder? Yeah, we, Shudder. On Shudder. I believe it's on here. I okay. already bookmarked it. 
And then, Very guys, nice. it is Friday. It is December 17th. If you're in Kansas City, Screenland tonight at 945 is showing dial code Santa slash Deadly Games, which don't take your kids, but, like, check that movie out. No. It's weird. Uh, Unless they hate dogs. If you're not in Kansas City, it's on Shutter right now, and then you could also watch Black Christmas during the same trial period and be ready for next week's episode. So, guys, Christmas movies. Oh, and do not forget, Amazon Prime. I believe in Santa Claus. It's worth six <laughs> bucks for weirdness, man. Watch it with a friend. Watch it with your kids. Your kids are going to think it's weird because it's weird. But it's it's Home Alone. Thank you for joining us on the Remedial Film Class podcast. As always, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Remedial Film Pod. You can find us at Facebook.com slash Remedial Film Pod or Facebook.com slash groups slash Remedial Film Pod. We'll be back at our regularly scheduled time next Wednesday with Black Christmas 1974. I want to see the ogre. I'm I'll, curious. I'll get it from the library. <laughs> I'm going to see if I have it on VHS. <laughs> I probably do. I buy a lot of obscure VHS. I don't have True Lies, though. Oh, no, I do have True Lies in VHS, but you don't. Did you ever you find your DVD v- of True Lies? No, Man. it's MIA. You have to buy that Spanish Blu-ray. I'll just watch the VHS. You have a VCR here? No, no. But I can come to your place and yeah, let's do that. Exactly. Watch it on VHS. Now we got to watch the French one too. Now that we know that exists, I don't want to watch the French v- uh, True Lies. What if it's better? It won't be. He did take a pretty gnarly flesh wound, though. Yeah. Which you don't usually see that on your kid heroes. I want to know where the f- they got that pie knife because I've never seen a pie knife that sharp <laughs> hey, man. in my life. <laughs> I can't even cut pumpkin pie with some pie knives. I don't know how that was happening. This kid was like sliced open by a pie a, knife. A pie knife is only as sharp as you make it. That's why it's the perfect. Uh, well, the guy the didn't have time weapon. to make it sharp. Like he took it from the table. No, no, I mean, in that no, dog. no, 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 no. I mean, it's only as sharp as you make it by like how hard you press it against something. <laughs> right, right. Well, so. he he did a arm swing at the kid's leg, and it went through his jeans and his leg. <laughs> And I'm like, it's a pie knife. Wow, was that the pie knife that did that? Yeah. Huh. I didn't think the child's wound warranted a crutch. What he should have done was... But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If Travis made this movie, that pie knife would have went into that kid's Achilles. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And that would have explained a shit ton of him limping. Yeah. Not that chair for a crutch. Yeah. Mm. Made cool visual, though. All right, dudes. Word. (laughs) Word.